Hey, it's Bill DeWeese from voiceoverrevolution.com. Today, let's talk about breaths in your audio. And in case you didn't know this, maybe you're newer to recording voiceovers, but breaths in audio can be the bane of your existence because um, they really, they can detract from the professional, professionalness of the audio. Um, clients oftentimes don't like it uh, to varying degrees, depending essentially, or you know, basically commercials, typically no, br no breaths. Um, E-learning, yes, but nothing terribly noticeable. Uh, long form narration like audiobooks, you want to leave the breaths for the most part in. Different audiobook publishers may have different uh, guidelines for that. Um, but nothing, again, overly obvious. There's probably never an appropriate time to have an over obvious breath unless you're acting and you're exasperated and uh, you want to let somebody know by breathing. But aside from acting, uh, there's, it's never a good idea to have loud breath. So let's talk about how do you deal with that. And I've got one, two, three, four, count them five ways to deal with breaths. First of all, number one, physically, meaning when you are uh, consciously aware of the fact that your breathing can be a problem, you can begin to discipline yourself to not over-breathe, for instance. In a relaxed conversation where you don't care, you may talk, and at the end of a sentence, you take a big breath. Whereas if you're doing a project, and by the way, I've done this for so long now that I do it subconsciously, so the idea is you do it, if you do it long enough, you don't really have to think about it. Um, but if you're reading a project, you can be conscious to subtly breathe and not over-breathe. So you end a sentence, take a slight breath, and then you move on. At a comma or a pause, you take a slight breath and you move on. And if you're very careful about it, you can really uh, reduce the obviousness of your breaths. Now, it takes some practice to get to do that to the place where you're not thinking about it. You don't want it to, to, to detract from your performance. <clears throat> Excuse me, but when we're in charge of doing all of our own um, audio and editing and, and that kind of thing, I mean, we're engineer and, and talent, so that's just something you have to be aware of. So practice that. You can get used to that with time. And <clears throat> you will have to excuse me. I'm fighting a little something or other down in here in this transition of, I was getting ready to say transition of seasons. It's really not, but it feels like it. Yesterday here in the Chicago area, it was spring-like, raining near 60. Today, it's as I look out my window right now, it is snowing. So number two, the use of a gate expander. And how to use one is beyond the scope of this video, but just be aware that it can have an impact uh, in either... Uh, exaggerating, depending on how the threshold is set. Uh, it can have an impact on making it, again, more obvious and more present, or it can help to reduce it. So you're, if you use a gate expander, uh, be careful and make sure you know how to use it properly because it can help or it can hurt you. Next is software, using a software plugin, a, like a de-breath, de de-breather software. There are a couple of companies out there that make that kind of, uh, uh, of software, most notably Waves and isotope. Um, but de-breathing software, there are a couple of parameters that you have to use and you have to really tweak it and get used to using it with your voice. But what it can do is it can take breaths and reduce them and sometimes eliminate them and can even replace it with room tone, which I'll explain what that is in, in just a few moments. Um, I tend, even though it sounds like a, like a dream come true, like an easy solution, I tend to stay away from de-breathing software. The reason is, oftentimes it doesn't sound natural. You have to be very judicious in your use of it. Uh, if you are overly aggressive in applying it, it, it you, can, you can tell. And number two, sometimes, again, depending on the parameters, how they're set, sometimes the de-breathing software does not recognize the difference between your breath and maybe the end of a word that ends in maybe a TH or an SH and sometimes will actually eliminate or lower the volume of part of your speech as opposed to just the breath. So if you do use deep breathing software, make sure you're always going to go back and listen because occasionally you will catch times where that software will just cut off like at the end of a word. But it's a viable solution. You just have to understand how it works and the, you know, the, the negative, which again, it, it could interrupt with the actual... Um, audio of your, of your, of your uh, voiceover. So you have to, you do have to check all of that out. And the next and finally would be, um, would be room tone. Actually, not finally, there's a fourth 
Uh, I'm going to get to room tone in just a second. The fourth is to lower the volume of the breath, meaning that you highlight and select that, that piece of audio where the breath is, and then within the software, you lower the volume level of that breath. And so when I use that method, I usually will lower the volume around 10 to 15 dB. And uh, it depends on whether I want it to be subtle or whether I want it to disappear pretty much completely. Uh, but oftentimes you can get it to a low enough amount so that it doesn't draw attention to itself. Because the whole reason of debreathing is not to create silence. It's to make sure that nobody notices anything about it. You know, it, it can be so silent that it draws people's attention to it. That like, whoa, wait a minute, that sounds weird. There's no, there's, it, there's complete silence there. Um, but by the same token, it being too loud draws attention to it as well. But sometimes just a very subtle breath works out very nicely. The fifth and final method is using room tone, where essentially you, uh, you take room tone, which by the way, is the sound of your studio when you're absolutely quiet. Every space, unless it's built to be to not do this, and, and there are only a few places like this in the world, uh, every space, there's, there's some sort of sound generated in it. Um, room tone is just, it's the quietness, and you know, it's not silence. Most of us have never experienced complete silence. And again, if you want to experience that, you have to go to a place like a laboratory. I think there's one in Minnesota where they've built, it's a complete quiet room, and it's so quiet, there's complete silence and you and I aren't used to that, <clears throat> excuse me. And in a quiet environment, you can actually, you can hear your eyebrows move. I mean, you can hear things, for, I've, I've been told, but people have done this. It, you can hear things that you've never even noticed before because we don't know what silence really is. So anyhow, you record a little bit of room tone, sit perfectly silent and still, record, get a second or two, and then copy. Now, usually I copy about a half second of room tone onto the clipboard. And then I'll use that to paste over the gaps between uh, phrases or sentences where I, I have a breath. And then I can either, I can uh, delete part of it to make it shorter if need be, or I can add to it to make it a little bit longer. You can adjust to the size necessary. But room tone, by its very nature, does not distract because it doesn't draw attention to itself because it's that natural silence that is not so silent that it's screaming that it's there. Hope that makes sense. So. You can physically, you know, discipline yourself to, to mitigate that to some degree, to, to reduce the, 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 the level and the loudness of the breath. Uh, your use of a gate expander can help or hurt you. So if you're using one, make sure you know how to use it. Also, there is deep breathing software. Again, with its own pros and cons, make sure you're very uh, knowledgeable and comfortable with using it before you trust it. Also, you can lower, you can select and lower the volume of the breath. And then finally, you can use room tone to paste over it. So having those tools in your toolbox and those strategies can really help you to clean up and make your audio sound uh, far more professional. Hope you find these tips helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. Talk to you soon.